I just haven't gotten around to really digging into it uh, until today uh, because I was making a replacement nut uh, that I can put a handle uh, onto so I don't have to use a wrench. So I quickly put a dial indicator on there for you um, and hopefully you can see it. And the slop, uh, let me adjust the zero. The slop is about 27 thou, meaning this piece right here, the, uh, the where the lever attaches to, moves up and down that 27 thou before the scroll inside catches on to these wedges. Uh, let me quickly show you uh, what in, what the inside looks like. If you have a quick change tool post, um, especially imports, this is how it's uh, assembled. This uh, once you remove the nut, there is this disc shaped piece right there with a the groove. Uh, that is a left handed thread. So you need to turn right to loosen that. Uh, I just clamped this whole body in a vise and took a piece of uh, metal that I had. You can probably use a crowbar, put it in there with a adjustable wrench and turn it clockwise. This is what holds the whole thing together. So let's take a quick look. There you go. That's what it looks like. There's thread at the end. Probably shouldn't be wearing black coat, black on black. But anyway, it's left-handed thread. And the bottom of this main uh, body, I'm just going to call it body, is threaded at the bottom. Okay. So when you tighten this, let's take the wedges out. Wedges have teeth like this on both of them, uh, kind of like the chuck, I guess, the scroll chuck. They ride up and down on this groove on T slots. Okay? And this is the piece that levers attach to. As you can see, there's a scroll. Okay? I'm gonna call it scroll. Uh, so when you tighten this, it brings the jaws down. And since they're wedge shaped, they tighten up uh, and hold the tool post. What's happening here is that the slop is coming from, well, before I talk about that, this piece goes in here. This rod is sticking in. Um, goes in here and it holds that piece, the scroll, uh, uh, keep it from wanting to move out. Okay, but what's happening is, see the shoulder right there? That's what it rests on at the bottom of the body. So what's happening is that even after I screw it all the way down, there's a bit of a play like this. You can see it. Well, let's see if I can. Ooh, maybe. So the shoulder sticks out well below the scroll piece. And I would say that's about 37 thou um, based on what we measure with the dial indicator. 
So there are a few different ways to address that. Okay. Um, one option is to move the shoulder in by I don't think you want it at 27 thou exactly. I think you want a couple thou, a thousands to give you that you know enough play so um, everything isn't so tight. So maybe 25 thousands it can machine off. But challenge with that is unless you have another lathe or another tool post you can't turn this on your lathe because you need a tool post. Well, this is the tool post. So another option is to machine a shim washer that fits over this major di uh, diameter and sits right below that white part so that when this goes back in, it, it snugs up and removes that uh, the extra play you got, the slop. So I decided to make a washer, shim washer to put on this uh, under this shoulder for a couple of reasons. Um, if I do that, I can experiment with the thickness of the shim to fine tune how tight these are going to mate. If I just go ahead and machine this off, I won't be able to do that. It's once I cut it, you know, unless I nibble away at it, um, um, you ruin this part, you're done. So what I'm going to do is make a washer that goes around this, that has the same diameter as the top shoulder piece. And I'm going to start with uh, about 25 thousandths thickness. And I'll slide it in there and we can experiment, play with it uh, to get the right fit we want. We don't want it so tight that you know I'm struggling with uh, turning the lever all, all the time. Uh, I want it to be smooth but um, I don't want it so loose that I still have the play on the lever here. So um, on mine, and this is uh, import, I'm sure uh, they're all coming out of the same factory. Uh, about 1.630 outside diameter. 1.630 inches. And the inside diameter is 1.245 um, so we want I want to give a little more a uh, room so when I actually uh, machine this I think the inside diameter I'm going to machine at one point um, two six zero. There's no reason it has to be a tight fit. Um, and for outside diameter I'm just going to shoot for 1.630 what this is. There's enough play that gives me uh, plenty of tolerance to to play with and it'll be 25 thou thick so I took a cold roll steel um, machined a shim I was a little nervous about making a shim parting off the shim this thin uh, I t made it out of round stock um, but it turned out all right. Look at that. There's a camera. Let's see here. 250. Not 250. 25. I'm sorry. 25,000. So the thickness came out just perfect. Inside, outside diameter came out 
just the way I want. So I guess uh, we'll install and see if it helps with the with the backlash. Let's clean. Make sure there are no chips. Clean under under side of this too. Make sure there are no chips. Let's see. I'm gonna put a little bit of machine oil there just to help with the. Uh, rust okay well look at that good fit I'm going to take this to my vise and tighten it and we'll install on a lathe. Okay, let's see how it worked out. There's a little bit of play, uh, which is, you don't want it too tight. Uh, based on my dial indicator, the backlash has gone from 27 thousandths to three thou and the lever uh, earlier used to swing way further and now it stays about five o'clock position which I like better so I say this is a success thanks for watching